and I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there for you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And so we're going to continue now with the second part of um, Voices in School. We're going to be looking at choral music again. So if you turn with me to page 25, we're going to be having a look at exercise two. And also if you want to turn in your PDF document to section E, you'll find a few little reminders of the main points of consideration in this little section. And so if you remember, I mentioned in the previous video that this doesn't come into the new exam now. The newly revised exam syllabus for the ABRSM grade 5 no longer has this question, so you will not be required to copy out um, short score or open score however I do recommend that you have a little go at it for a couple of reasons one because you may be asked about it in a general way and it's good to just expand your musical knowledge in that sense and also it's a really really easy and enjoyable exercise and so why not do a little bit of music theory just because you can not only because you have to and so now we're going to be looking at open score. If you just make sure that you've read through the information on page 23, and you'll find that I've given you some reminders of that in the PDF document, just to summarise what's there. Now, a choir may be written uh, in open score, perhaps if you're not so pressed on space, if you're not uh, trying to squeeze and save space but also if it, the voice parts have got really really complicated lines then they're going to need a little bit more space so open score is beneficial for that you'll notice now that each step each voice part has its own stave its own line and literally you're just copying the note heads exactly as each voice part says except for the tenor line which now is written, the, the form is to write it in treble clef and it's transposed an octave higher than it's sung and so that little number 8 attached to the treble clef will tell us that. That's just one of the accepted forms in choral music. And now, because each voice part has its own line, the stems will revert back to the accepted form of changing over the middle line stems up and down as appropriate for each voice part and so they've started exercise 2a for you and by all means you can carry that on just continuing to copy those voice parts individually i will now go on and make a start on exercise 2b the one that they've left untouched so we'll just have a little look at that one together the most important thing, if you remember, is to make sure that your voice parts stay aligned so we can see what each voice is doing on each beat of the bar because the singers need to be aware of where they are in relation to what the other voice parts are doing. We can't be all scrambled across the, the line. We've got to show each beat what each voice part is doing. And so we need our clefts. So soprano and alto have treble clef, they're singing at pitch. Tenor clef also has treble, uh, sorry, tenor voice part, do me, also has the treble clef. But then because they are transposed an octave higher, we put this little figure eight to show that we've just changed that. 
to the accepted form and then of course the base part is in base clef. And once you've got your first note it's easy peasy and it's really quite therapeutic and an enjoyable exercise. So we need our key signatures. Each voice part of course needs the key signature. They all need to know what they're singing. Just make sure you position those correctly for the keys. And the clef appropriately. Time signature and then we're ready to go. So I think I'm just going to go um, a, a bar at a time. I'll start with the treble. So I'm going to just try and follow theirs as a general guide. But more, more than that, my voice parts need to be aligned. E, E, F, D, Alto is E, A, A. Now we've got quavers here. So we need to show that they begin on the fourth beat of the bar and then here's your half beat whilst the soprano is singing a crotchet. It's going to be the same for the tenor. Remember we're now an octave higher. So we need to start on the C above middle C. Now we need a D, just watching the placement. D, F, and then the bass part is at pitch, and we need an A, A, A. Now this is a dotted note, so we need the dot, and then this octave drop, bottom A, is going to fall in at the same time as the last half beat of the bar with the alto and the tenor. So we need to make sure that is also in the correct place. Now the stems will follow the usual format. So because these are above the middle line, the stems will come down. I'm trying to just show the movement of the voice part with the length of the stems as well. Stems go up here for the alto. Stems down for the tenor because we're above that middle line. And then these for the stems will be down in the bass part, but then of course this one will have to be up, and that just sort of shows the format. And so we just continue in the same vein, and so it's up to you. We could just do all the treble, all the alto, or you could work a bar at a time. I'm going to work a bar at a time, I think. doesn't matter what order you go in so long as you follow some sort of pattern it's better to I find it easy to do the stems afterwards just so I'm not thinking about too much in one go and so now this the tenor part will be this C above middle C because we've transposed that up there's the D and then making sure that the quaver falls in line with the soprano quaver so that they can see that the voice parts are working together. Same again here, we can have an E, D, perhaps make those a bit bigger. There we go. And then of course it's a busy bass line. So we're going to have to make sure that fits in in the half beat. And then the D comes on the second beat, make sure that's in alignment. So we need to make sure that those quavers at the second part of the second beat fall together. Back to the D, that's dotted. And so finally this A comes on the last quaver or eighth beat of the bar, there we go. Oh, I've missed the alto line. Silly me. Let's do that one now. So that's an A. Oh, I've put it. Oh, I've gone. Deary me. I've gone uh, closed to school. Do apologise. A. 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 Right, now I can get those quavers in place. There we go. 
Okay, now we've just got stems to think about. Stems up for the alto line. Stems will be down for this ten part. We're above the middle line. There we go, and then this busy bass line. I think we'll flip the stems up now. That's it. And then we can see, perhaps I'll just nudge that A along a bit. That seems to have wandered. That's that. There we go. Okay, next bar. Not a too much thinking, just stay <laughs> focused. F, G, F, E busy alto line going on here now of course it has its line of its own open score must remember that so we've got E C D E that should fall in with the soprano quavers C C and then, of course, the tenor line is now in the treble clef. C, E, make sure that fits in with the quaver movement of the other parts. D, C, C, A sharp for the last bit of the bar. And then just crotch it's in the base showing us where the beat falls one two three with a sharp four there we go so let's get our stems in place stems down there we go so this time with stems will go up here because although this one's above the middle line this one's much further away so that one kind of wins the vote then stems can come down just the usual decisions for stem direction when you're in open score then the stem can flip upwards and stems down in the base, last little bit in the last bar. Just some nice simple crotchets. D, E, A. Now here we're sharing a note head, whereas now because we're in open score, they get their own note. We don't have to share the note head. So B, G sharp, A. They're singing the same note. B, up a step, so we're in the treble an octave higher, remember. And again, we're sharing a note head here, but now because we're in open score, not short score, they can have their, their own note head. That's the bass, this is now the bass, the E, A. There we go, so stems as usual. And I think our stem's going down here. And down here, of course. Not quite finished. The only thing we've got to do now is add our articulation, our slurring marks. So these quavers are slurred. Not these first ones, though, in this second bar. So these are, however, these are slur, slur. It's unusual that they aren't slurred. Oh, perhaps they are. Let's have a check. It's unusual that they aren't slurred. 
okay well we'll just stick to that if that's what's in the given music there we go and that's that so that's just a quick overview of choral music and short score and open score over these two videos I do hope that that's been helpful to you if you can give me a like that'd be really great and subscribe to my channel to keep updated please do visit SharonBale.com and make use of all of the resource available to help you there thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye